So I have a different layout potentially than you have in your sheets. So okay. you know, you may have some. Um, I don't know that, no. Um, and I don't know that it, it probably wouldn't say, it's not going to say that in a way that's understandable. It's going to tell you that as a total dollar amount, which is not going to um, tell you what percentage. Right. All right. Okay. So, we're going to go to the next one. This is right. This screen is where that is calculated. Um, so right now we have 8.12 percent of um, in the fund balance range. Um, it's already calculated with fifty thousand dollars from fund balance. So that's that is where you can manipulate the rate. How much are we getting back from the? Um, uh, So you can use that yeah. because it's not in the revenue report. Right. So and we didn't receive it yet, though, right? Right, but it isn't. Since you know you're getting yeah, it, yeah, you can yeah. do that. By the end of the year, so it'll go into fund balance anyway, so we can offset it. All right, with, with the full 36. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. 50,000, you said that what we projected we were going to put in as part of our revenue, um, at least under the state, that we were going to use that? Um, it, it came from us at some point. I don't know okay. that it's on the revenue report. But that, that has already been part of this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. your fund balance down to 7.68 percent. What is the recommended amount that we should have in there? Um, so that's on the last page of your report. You need to be, or they, DRA recommends that you're between 5 and 17 percent. Um, the Government Finance Officers Association recommends a narrower range between something like 8 and, 11, eight and 10 or 7 mm -hmm. and 10. So with with that amount there. So that thirty six is really coming out of yeah, right, right. really coming right out of fund balance. It's going right back in. So what what were we at before that was eight point? Um, eight point one two. Okay. Oh, sorry, about eight point one two. So um, give me a second here. I need to figure out where the. So there's your range, the range information, and there's your tax rate. So okay. it brings it down to $24.24. And $24.24. So, sorry, you're right, $24.14. That's interesting because it didn't, oh, with the old assessment. Okay, so, so you can 
sorry, wrong column. So if you see on the right hand column, it's showing you what it was before oh, okay. we manipulated that number. So the current year rate now is 24.14 as opposed to, you can see on the right hand side, it was 24.24. 24. Um, it for just just for reference, the col the rows above that you can't see them very well on the screen, but it says a dollar on the left. It says a dollar fifty cents and ten cents, and the amount of money on the right hand side it would take to create that impact. Um, it's a dollar. It's fifty cents and ten cents, oh, and I can't okay. because. Um, I know, I know, okay. I know. It's in the same, it's in the column to the left of the current year. So now it's 42 cents. So without the without the thirty six thousand, this represents a four point two percent tax increase. Mm -hmm. I think it's even two bit two two and a half. That would be more than the tax increase just by kill increase too. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a kill increase though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which ninety percent of it is about a So that would mean bringing it down another 58 cents, which means you've got to find more than the $140,000 for fund balance. Because the 140000 was 50 cents. Okay. Does that include the 36000 so Yes. Well, um, no, that's 36000 is not part of that. If you take the current rate, yep. 23 and multiply it by two and a half percent, the difference is 58 cents. So from um, the previous 50,000 um, from overlay, like if you if you increase that to, you know, you'd have to go to more than 140. So you could include the 36 in that. In the 140. In the 140. Right. But the 50 is already accounted for. Right. You know, wipe it 
So actually, it, you know, it would be closer to the 148 plus the 140 plus the 28, because the 28,000 is um, to get 10 cents. So. Six thirty four. So it's seven point six eight percent um, with the eighty six thousand. Using eighty six thousand, you've got a fund balance of seven point six eight percent. Seven point six eight. Yes. What would it be if we took five percent? If we were um, bringing it down to five percent, what would be the um, to bring the fund balance down to two percent, that's um, yeah. it's on the back. Bringing the total to five percent of the fund balance. Um, it's on the back. You're at last sheet. Four hundred twelve thousand nine hundred forty-seven. Yeah. So, that's what we can so yeah. just one other consideration in this: um, the more you have in fund balance, the more you have cash flow. Mm -hmm. And yeah. less in fund balance, the more you're going to have. So with the um, with the thirty six thousand in um, moved over the fund balance, I moved out of the fund balance into the overlay. Because we're going to put it back and in. And it's going to go back in anyway, okay. so that's going to stay at right at the eight point one two. Whatever you don't use Whatever now for your budget goes into the fund balance. Balance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's calculated in next year's tax rate because part of the equation is the auditor's report of what you know how much was returned. Okay. What do we um Potentially, if you wanted to, um, for example, contracted services at sixty thousand dollars, you know you're not going to spend oh, that. Yeah, yeah, you're also yeah. not bringing in the revenue. Right. Um, you, you could reduce the budget amount, sort of theoretically, right. down to forty or t you know or twenty five or something like that, and use that difference here. Right.
So, for example, contracted services at the end of the third quarter was expended at not quite twelve thousand dollars. Right. It's not the same as the budget report that you saw. The, the budget report. It is. It is third quarter. So. So, um, so, so there's, you can see contracted services highlighted right there. Just keep in mind also that whatever gets returned for fund balance from this year's budget helps you next year. Right. So it's, it doesn't really go away. Mm -hmm. Whatever you, whatever you, you know, the more flexibility you exert now, the less flexibility you have in the future. So, um, if you wanted to go back to, um, so twenty, it takes twenty-eight thousand to make a ten cent, in, uh, ten cent effect on the tax rate. Right. So you probably make an eight cent reduction by using twenty thousand, something like that. So their tax rate is increasing 36 cents.
six, um, it would be um, with what you have calculated in there. It's a 43 cent increase um, originally. No, school. So before we started, like if you, if you look at the if you look at that chart, it yeah. tells you that you know um, the PY rate prior year yeah. rate. That's where we're currently at. Current, so current year rate is in the is the middle column. That's okay. what we've calculated now with what you are going to contribute from fund balance. And then um, on the right hand side, current rate with old assessment. In other words, um, the way DRA calculated it. Because you have all these other tax rates, yeah, which are more, yeah. Because it does it proportionally. authorization to change any other ones. Right. So we're only changing ours, which means that we're voting, our vote is for the new total, Correct. tax rate total. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So, okay. so I would specify the amount and overlay, if you don't mind. The, the amount that, you know, the amount that you are contributing to the tax rate, which it is currently at 86. that we um, reduce a total of 86000 from fund balance to offset tax rate. Is that So I have that calculated 
here. Um, I just have two worksheets, and I would just like a, a will of the board to go with one worksheet over the other before we start, so that have you printed out the. Uh... I did not print out a new one. So, so all the it's condensed, and all the numbers match, and I did check that, but right. um, no, I didn't print a new one. I'd like to work off of the same sheet. So, uh, okay, so how about Th those are the only lines that are that are that is the only line that is different is that I. have Combine that as opposed to your your old sheet, which has them um, as as you are accustomed to separated out. Okay, so currently it's the okay. Thank you. But if you're going to make corrections, I just want to know which sheet I'm making corrections to. Are there objections to consolidating the three lines? Um, well, it, in oh, I see. Yeah. Yep. No, no objection. Okay. All right, so we'll work off of that one then. Okay. All right, so when we left off, we had already we had approved the executive office budget, the elections, the registration budget, the financial admin budget, the evaluation, personal personnel administration, planning and zoning. We were at government buildings. And the conversation when we left off was um, was wanting to have a more serious approach to preventative maintenance included within the government building lines. So, let's talk about that. What do we have here? I find what I want to talk about. Okay, so looking at the um, sewer and water, we're not going to change heat. We've talked about already. Electricity, we've talked about. It really comes down to repairs and maintenance. So that's on page four. So we have. Let's see. So have we heard back from George about? Oh, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. The town hall meeting. Did we hear anything back from? Um, we're going to reach out to Bob and see if um, if he had any suggest any other suggested uh, maintenance. Well, or is it just keeping in mind we have antiquated systems? Well, I guess yeah, that's so, what, what, that's yeah. Not what I was going to say. So we have, um, and we're going to talk about the boiler itself in capital, right? We've already we've gone back and forth about that. We have air conditioning uh, concerns, so we repaired one of the, was it one or two of the, um, one of four. One of four of the So four of those, uh, three of those, hanging out there. How much did it cost us to repair? Eleven five. Eleven five to repair one of those this year. Yeah. And we are recommending budgeting ten thousand. Okay, that's not enough to fix one of the um, one of those. Huh? Richard is also getting quotes. He's had a hard time getting. Um, people to respond to him, yeah. but to do the portico so that you have right. a... And the site, too, so didn't he have uh, concerns about siting? There were concerns there? about... The where we are over there, I guess. Yeah. To, on the back. Mm -hmm. So, that's going to be... Uh, all of those things are going to cost more than... More than that. So, time we go around. I'm not getting off of the original <laughs> ahead to see what we have uh, elsewhere. Okay. All right. What do we, um, what do we want to do with the town hall repairs and maintenance line? Keeping in mind also that maybe um, if we go forward on the capital plan with the boiler, um, there may be associated cost with that beyond, um, beyond um, the actual cost of the, the boiler, right? There will be other install charges, so which would come out of, um, come out of the So that number from CIP.
last summer that was to replace it or to repair it? it, was it, it um, the condenser was replaced. Okay. I don't know <coughs> of, of the remaining yeah. ducts and whatnot, but that was the biggest part of it was. Do you have any idea of the condition of the remaining equipment? Um, that, that, you know, in similar condition as the first okay. and of that same age. They're all the same age. Well, no, I think something happened. Um, this year, yeah, but, but, but he, had, he had mentioned to Oh, us, okay, I'm sorry. No, I think... Like $200 well, a year for preventative maintenance on it. I know my generator is a couple hundred dollars a year to have a preventive maintenance, but I have a much smaller unit, so I'm not sure that that so we have, compares. So we have done... We, we've had some kind of contract with a vendor to maintain that mm -hmm. um, for the last few years, so I'm not sure what's not getting done or if we're not utilizing the contract or if the contract doesn't cover certain things of all I know is you came in and said that we hadn't been maintaining it since it was put in before we built it. So So that contract's about eight hundred dollars. We're already doing it. For so one year? Wasn't it yeah. Well so so I can't answer that. I, I don't know, you know, I know that we paid them an annual amount of money. Um, the other thing as we're talking about preventative maintenance, we do have a contract with um, a door company for all the overhead doors right. at the three facilities. Um, so we are doing that one. And the elevator? The lift? In the elevator, so yes. That's the contract for the maintenance on the lift, too? Yes. Okay. And that all comes out of repairs, maintenance, or down there? Well, the, um, the, the overhead door one gets split between the different facilities. Three? Okay. But otherwise, yes. So it's all right. all three facilities, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would suggest that if it, we spent sixteen thousand six hundred fifty-one so far in twenty eighteen on repairs, that we would need at least fifteen. Mm -hmm. And if we're part of the twenty nineteen budget, <coughs> are you are you saying that you're adding preventive maintenance in there? Because I would like to see it as a separate line. To be honest with you, okay. I, but I don't know if you're including it in that repairs budget. I just think that we need to see that that's happening and see that it's getting done. I, I had a meeting with Highway yesterday, mm -hmm. and I got a list of all of their, because that's what I was going to write up to, a list of all of their items that they would require preventive maintenance, and also I'm going to meet with the fire chief as well. Right. But, um, you know, there there's a lot. Now, it, some of it isn't every year, right. you know. Um, but, and I, I bet that you always didn't think about the overhead doors, because that wasn't one of them that he gave me, but you know, we're talking about septic, boiler, generator, compactor, um, baler, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and now overhead doors as well. So there's a lot of things that need to have, but some of them, George said that some are yearly, but some of them are two to three years, you know. Um, and, you know, it's a town hall is the same way, so I think we need, I'd like to see it as a separate line. They can be under the, that section, but knowing that we're doing preventive maintenance to help that what's happening this year. Okay. So we want a, a new line then for town hall, highway, fire, and transit, and transportation. Well, I think we can use just one line of preventive maintenance and combine them. I mean, we, you would have a figure in there that would contain, and you would be able to see where it was because it's when you got your invoice and invoice you would be able to determine just which building is affecting. But I would think if, if someone is coming down to do preventive maintenance on generators, they do all three buildings at the same time and, and stay on. I wouldn't assume that's the current. No. Why not? I can't answer that. No, I'm saying I would assume that if we hired somebody to do it, we'd say, okay, we want all three building generators to be 
No, I don't think it's current at all. I think, but I would like to see, you know, you save time on your service calls and all of that, and just have them spend a day here and take care of them. It's it's something that could happen maybe in the department, like if there were a department in meeting or something. Mm -hmm. I, I the, the departments work independently, and mm -hmm. nobody knows. Hey, I'm getting my generator worked on. Does yours need anything? Mm -hmm. and, and that could help. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's why I said we could have it in one line, but it, it, if we're not going to have it in one line and we're not going to do like the project for something that everyone has and have it at their building, then we could have a separate. Yeah, but. Reached out to all the department heads um, regarding reinstated department head meetings, and that's the first time we've gone over two weeks. Okay. Reach out to them again. But, um, or have a liaison if you don't have a department meeting, at least have someone in there that they can point of contact they can call to say, yeah, Tammy, can, I, can you bring this up for me, you know, and, right. and do that. Um, but I just really think, I, I really think preventive maintenance <coughs> is important because in the long run it will save you money. Right. I don't think we with that. Okay, so we want to add a new line then somewhere in there. Well, keep in your mind that... Um, you tell me where you want it. between electricity for the fire station and repairs. And the line for mm -hmm. facility or building, it doesn't matter. A building for the right facility for the maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we've got to figure out what makes sense to put in there. So we'll be moving money from some of the yeah, because some of the, um, that, that's just it. So some of the repairs slash maintenance obviously covers preventative maintenance there with uh, so like the doors or mm -hmm. things like that. Where, I mean, some of it never got done, though, so that's the problem. So it wasn't in the budget to be mm -hmm. done, or it was used for something else and not preventative right. maintenance, yeah. if that was the intent. Yep. So... With the proposed um, uh, town administrator, that person could be the person coordinating a lot of this, um, these efforts with mm -hmm. the department heads. So mm -hmm. that certainly is a, a benefit. Uh, so thank you. Sure. I'm not sure if it doesn't affect the frame of mind yet. So there has to be some sort of coordination between the departments. If, if there isn't a senior position to coordinate a number of the efforts around town, it's still going to fall to the department heads to coordinate their own efforts. maintenance budget in somebody's line mm -hmm. doesn't tell them that some of that has to be preventive maintenance. That's my worry. That they're going to have a catastrophe happen and it's all going to come out of that line. Then there's no preventive maintenance mm -hmm. money left over to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's more about being assured I mean, again, policies need to be made to address these issues 
that we make sure our department heads have that we have to maintain our equipment so we don't have disastrous situations. So, you know, we're lacking on a few things about policies and and making sure and getting a, um, a status update from our department heads on certain issues, you know, after a certain period of time within the year. But it kind of hides it when you put it in a repair and maintenance line. But if, if that's where you want to put it, that's fine. But I just think that um, It, it could be lost there mm -hmm. and not done. Right. I don't disagree with anything you just said. So um, we need from each department has a preventive maintenance schedule. We need to. You've already started working on that. I have five ways, right? And I will meet with fire as well. He just wasn't available yesterday. Um, okay. So and I'm not sure it's police, really. That is responsible. It's, it's the town administration building, so we kind of have to make sure that that happens. It's not necessary. Typically, yeah. it's him because it's all the lost. systems. Well, well, he's all the systems are downstairs. Yeah, yeah. The internet's downstairs. The boilers downstairs. The ACs mm -hmm. are downstairs. It affects him the most. And, and, and to repair on anything, you need access down there. Right. So he's the one that notices if, if something is to be noticed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, he has to control access. Mm -hmm. <coughs> not responsible for them, but he sees them. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Yeah. So. I will, I'll take that on. Why don't we do this again? Why don't we put uh, the government building inspection on hold. We just have a good conversation. Uh, well, before we do that, there wasn't anything else that needed to change in there. Everything else we felt was um, Say the same, it was just for the uh, repairs and maintenance or, um, or the new provider maintenance line. Either or is what really gets changed, right? Well, water, water and sewer, have we gotten any updates from that? No, that's that's no. Um, a suggestion though is that um, you, you could keep you could create this new line and just fund it at a dollar, and then next year, um, assuming we're not in a default budget, I guess you could create the line again, but um. We can put expenses in that line. Mm -hmm. So even if so, if it's yeah. funded at a dollar, we can use the line. Um, you, you have to know that, like, you have to stay in your bottom line and watch your maintenance mm -hmm. lines. But you can at least put it somewhere separate so that you can see it so happening, see it happen. and that can inform next year's budget process. Right. I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So good you've idea. created the line already. It's still there, right? It is so there. So funded at a dollar. Is there any objection to that? No, as long as we tell our department heads that preventive maintenance is part of the repair and maintenance at this point until we know more about what we're going to need to move from there down, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. And then you'll show the bills in that line so that and we can adjust out of this budget when, when we go review our budget. Okay. Yep, I'm okay with that.
But if you look at the town hall maintenance bond, you know, at 17, it was 25,000, mm -hmm. 18 was 16,000, so why are we only going 10? I mean, we should really judge what it is in the range of I think the last that, couple of years. I think that, um, well, I'm not going to speak to it, but I was, I don't know if I'm, I, I don't, I'm assuming that it was kept that way because it could be manipulated other places. Um, Changed and I changed all the requirement and associated. Everything is up to date. We're yes. good to go on that. Are there any suggested changes with, other than those? With the police department? No. Okay. No. No? We're ready to accept the uh, police department line as uh, on the uh, 102918 updated sheet? Oh, can I have one more question? Yeah, sure. This was done before we knew that we were having an officer leave. Do we know if we legally refunded enough to return to that officer. So the line is calculated at 2% over the existing salaries. So so theoretically, if you're going to hire somebody at less money, you could... Well, but you know what? We also have, he, was a, he was a sergeant, right? Right. You may yeah. not hire a sergeant. You might hire a patrol, I, I don't which know. might have a little flexibility with that. Right. right. Okay. So... And, but he may, he may promote somebody else. One of but the patrolmen to sergeant now. So. Right, so right. But I think, yeah, the fact that we're doing okay. a, a sergeant versus a patrolman, yeah. I'm okay with it. All right. Any other questions or changes there? Mm -hmm. not, we're ready to accept the 542 So his request last year was to change in 2018 to six hours. Mm -hmm. he's, um, he's at five hours. Mm -hmm. So that request remains the same over the 2% increase. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the 21-216 includes six The 21-216 is, is the 
current five hours oh, at okay. a two percent increase. So we need to add eighty dollars more a week to satisfy what his request was. Is what you're saying? We need to increase it by eighty hours, eighty dollars a week. Or well, so you can you can increase um, column H. You can increase the current budget amount by eighty dollars a week, or you could do the two percent. Um, Eighty dollars times two percent times fifty-two. Isn't that the way it was? It's also offset by uh, revenue. By revenue, revenue. And it runs into um, um, a section of Does he get paid um, actual hourly? Um, it's it's a salary based on that. Okay. It's currently structured as a salary based on that number of hours. So there, you know, in construction season, it's more mm -hmm. than in the winter. Though there are also always health and code things going on. And building permits, they still have right. So building permits are heavier in the. I mean, they do happen in the winter months, but they're heavier, of course, in the summer yeah. months. Let's just say that we don't lack for issues we need to deal with. Yeah. Right. These are probably. I support increasing in the hour. You have to lower that number. Okay, so um, it would be twenty-two eight eighty to um, just increase to six hours, mm -hmm. um, and then to do a. Two percent increase on that it would be twenty-three three thirty-eight. So, so, um, hold on. so, what is the the twenty nineteen proposed appropriation actually here is twenty-two eight three nine. That's including the taxes. That's got taxes in it. If the sec, like, look at the lines right. above it. It's right. payroll taxes. Just talking about the first Just line. Payroll. Okay. Sorry, no. So currently twenty-one two sixteen. Is the number to change, and that would be twenty three 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 eight. Yeah. yeah, if you want the rate increase plus the increase in hour. And then, do you know what the tax rate, would, what that payroll tax rate would be? Is that? Um, let me just write down the twenty one two sixteen before I overwrite it. It changes to seventeen eighty five. Okay, and so what's that total? Twenty twenty five one twenty three.
put it on hold just for a moment. We can keep um, we can keep um, the numbers like it is for now, Carolina, because we've got um, you already wrote down the 21, 20, 21 to 15. Yeah. So just leave it like it is for now. So I can, if you don't mind, so mm -hmm. I can look at the, the bottom line after we finish uh, the highway and street. All right, so. Revised budget for 2018 is 52449. The um, proposed um, 2019 is, is 55. That's what you asked for. So yes. A, a market increase versus um, across the board. Right. And explain to me. Remind me again why he was asking for a market. That's probably better answered directly from him. It was, you know, it, it's about cost savings and merit. Okay. So, that, and that's why we increased in, in this current was because of the, um, the uh, what we saw as cost savings via the road agent and the system working together and not having to contract out a lot of those services. So he's suggesting that going forward into this year, we can just buy another set for him. Yeah. It's actually two. Well, it's two over the current rate. Right. 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 It's three over last year's budget amount. Right. So keep the default two. budget in mind, too. Right. You're going down to. 52, yeah. All right. So the uh, default budget passes. He gets a, so potentially gets a, uh, he's not getting a, a $2,000 increase. He's getting uh, less than that. He gets what he has today. All right. Well. But that you have to find what he's, the extra $1,000 Oh, you just, your people. revised budget doesn't go forward. Well, you can you can you can do that. You can always revise your lines. It's just that your bottom line is calculated based on the 2018 Gosh, budget, the amount, not not his current line. rate. Got yeah. It. So Got you're it. already finding a thousand dollars in another yeah. line. Yeah. Minus you know minus contractual obligations. Right. right. So yeah. Can you? I, I don't know how easy it would be for you to show what a two percent increase would look like. From the 52 or the 50, from the 53? Yeah. That's the way it has today. Yeah. So 52, 4, and 4, 9. So 50, it's there now on the screen, $54,060 is 2% is over his current rate. Over what? Including the over thousand the we gave him? It, it's 2% over the 53. Which is what he is making this year. Right, okay. right. And, and it's what again? I'm sorry. It's 54060.
So um, the current hourly rate times 40 hours a week for 52 is 37,440. But that's not how that line was originally calculated because it, it, it was calculated to include some number of overtime hours for plowing. Right. Oh, because yeah. they will be there. Right. right, you combined with the winter. Oh. Right, oh, winter help. And with the regular. Part, part of it went to full time staff and part of it went to. Yeah. Um, it became part time staff. So the uh, $2 per hour increase was for the plow drivers to get. Well, try to find. They got a more than $2. Okay. Well, so in the notes, the two two dollar per hour increase is the request that that he used to calculate that dollar amount increase. So so in other words, forty three zero eight two on the full time line um, is for a two dollar an hour increase. That's okay. the request. That's only one body. That's only one. Yes. Person. Yeah. That's, yes. Yeah. So so that's not really the one that we're questioning. It's it's the uh, part-time line, right? No, no, I'm still on that one, but so, but it also represents, okay, just let me try, I don't remember anymore. It also represents the fact that he's now the manager, supervisor, and whatever they're calling mm -hmm. it, of the transfer station. Mm -hmm. well, so, so, so there was a dollar an, eight, an hour raise given for that, for that. point. Okay. Yeah. So that's already covered. So this $2 increase was for well, it's again one dollar. Well, because he already got the dollar. Well, no, no, no. He's requesting an additional so two, two hours. hours. It's yes. not like what Ed was. I mean, like what it was. Yeah, I think so. It's it's an, a request of an additional two dollars right. over the current rate, not the current budget amount, the current rate. Yeah, I'm much right. more comfortable given the the two percent ATV that we're doing all the other employees. Okay, so thirty-eight one eighty-nine is a two percent increase over the current rate which without talking about overtime there will be overtime mm -hmm. are we still talking about full time or part time Far, full time full time so how do you budget through that well that's a great question <laughs> we don't um, have a line for overtime within the highway department so. no so it's just part of his his line. So Part-time does work some overtime in the winter, but, but his overtime is really plowing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four is one and a half. One and a half. Okay. I'm just looking for an answer to a, a procedural question. When someone is plowing the entire night, they're not required to work the next day, right? I mean, the no, day, they typically go home and they sleep. They go home, so they don't, they're eight hour. So how does that work? It's a 40 hour week. That's, oh, yeah, you tell me that, I'm sorry. You're right, okay. So if they worked, you know, about 16 hours straight, they didn't work their shift, actually they're not getting overtime because that eight hours from midnight to Whatever Potentially is depending. the one that he's going to go home and sleep. Depending on what happens the rest of the week. We, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so it's anything over 40. Correct. Um, so he also received some overtime for um, attendant dis deficiencies at the transfer station. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so the there's the potential for that at any time. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Would that come out of the um, well, line? It, it should, mm -hmm. right. or it could, but just be aware of, yeah. Well, I mean, so we have flexibility there, I mean. Yes. Okay. If we're not paying an attendant. Okay. Right. All right. So it doesn't look like there was that much over time built into the position last year, as funded at 38 by 48. Probably not the position. Oh, okay. So I thought there'd probably be less over time if you had to keep So it's a different, so $3,188 of the current year budget at his old original hired rate, mm -hmm. um, you've got an extra $3,188 that could be allocated toward 
over time. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, it's about 130 hours of overtime. A year? Is where? Built into? Um, was built into the original budget line at the original rate. Okay, so hold on. Let me find the line Okay. So, so at the 38.5? 38.548 yep. includes the 3,188 extra dollars over a 40 hour week. Okay. If you divide that by that rate at that time, it was right. approximately 130 hours of overtime. Okay. So what do we need? To, uh, what does the line need to reflect then to keep well, that trend going at the, at the 2019 proposed rate with the two percent? I can't find it on the screen. Because so. um, it's not. People looking yeah. up and down. Now, right, and now it's my eyes, not you. It is very fuzzy. <laughs> it is me too, I get that. And my eyes aren't great and I'm getting worse every day. So. But, all right. Okay, so so if you wanted the, if you wanted that line to reflect a 2% increase and 130 hours of overtime, uh -huh. the amount for that line would be $41,504. What do you mean, 41? 41,504. Instead of 4386. Right. So we're. Well, it's it's less than the proposed. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we we don't need to make any other adjustments. Then. So we should be covered in the event of overtime. You are. And the APB. Okay. So. So you're going to leave it at 43 instead of making it 41. So, so we can reduce if we want to. Yeah, you that's fine. You could reduce. We so it's 41. I mean, what is? Oh, I, You've been here several years. I mean, is the 130 hours adequate? I mean, that's three weeks. It depends on, and I hate to say this, but it depends I know, on but the weather. I mean, I don't know. It's, three weeks, though. We've had, we've had winters where we got, you know, back-to-back -back storms every week. We've had mm -hmm. winters where there was a lot of ice, but they, you know, and not a lot of snow, so it wasn't as timely. We've had... Yeah, I mean, if you're comfortable, I'm okay with No, no, I'm not saying I am yet. I'm still trying to think it through. We, you know, Um, right. 
If you're using the big charts, you do. Right. Yeah. Okay. So these are dedicated. We've had um, some fire personnel, right, over the years as long as you have what have worked, worked in that position. Right. Yes, but it's always been a struggle to stay staffed from storm to storm. Right. Yeah. And of course, you know, <laughs> Mark meets a lot of times. Uh, these same folks yeah. that are volunteering to right. work for us, I mean, they're getting paid. I don't know. They're not volunteering for free, but they are coming forward to mm -hmm. offer their, their services. May also be the same people that are, are the most dependable down there that he needs. So, or right, I mean, yes. whatever. Yes. It's, that they, yep. it's not, as you, you well know, it's not uncommon during a winter storm for the fire department to be out there with the highway through, cutting down the street and whatever. I mean, yep. I mean, when roads get closed, they have to, all sorts of things. Yep. That's the police, too. So, I'm, I'm not concerned about leaving at 43 as long as that's not the expectation of that person's position that, that they are going to take that home next year. Yes. You know so, what I'm saying? Yes. So um, they, they, they know that there's overtime built into that line. Right. Um, once, once the budget passes, I always prepare for the board current rates and new rates so that you're signing off on everybody's. Okay. So, yeah, the note was a $2 an hour increase, but that's so that's that's the will of the board. You know, you can decide to make that happen within that if you want or not, and that's that remains another question for another day. Okay. Well, I think that or, we, we just say that this is two percent on every staff. Right. So the new yeah. line, the new new <coughs> say two percent ATV on all of them, right? Sure, on, on, on road agents. Yeah. Two percent ATV. Because that was their note. Right, right. What right. Yes, that's, yes. So, but wait, Caroline, so on existing rates, and then it says plus overtime, which is the end of the So we know that, we that, that, that includes overtime um, or something, yeah. It's helpful, too, when yeah. you're discussing it with, um, with folks on the budget committee, too, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you don't have to try to remember every single thing yep. on every line, right? No, mm -hmm. right here. Um, no hourly increase, more summer. So within this so so again, that's just the the um, department heads. Right. No. So, but within this this line, so if we look at it. So part time staff is flaggers and miscellaneous um, things that you need have, to happen. You have one thirty five hour week employee, thirty to thirty five hour week employee in that line, plus. Oh, that's that. Yeah, yeah okay. plus whatever so flaggers or okay. um, transfer station. Somebody from the transfer station helped them pave the fire department. Yeah. So, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. So, because we have someone who's definitely, we should include 2% in that as well. Because that person is a steady employee for well, so many hours a week, right? If he is. I mean, is he? That, it's, it's sort of, I thought it was more at, on call. He doesn't consistently work. Oh, he doesn't work every week? Oh, he does work. Yeah, well, lately, lately. You know, in right. the so this year he has been. A couple of years ago, he had other things going on, and he wasn't here right. as much. It is, it's traditionally, like I said, so at least over the last several years, it's been divided between several different people. Depending yeah. On who, yeah. 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 It's not consistent. It's just in one person. You also have your plow people in there. Line is to have more hours, more hours. and yes. not um, 
Does he set the rates for the people that he hires on a temporary basis? Or is it there is it a set rate, a standard rate? There is a standard rate, or okay. there has been a standard rate for people who just fill in for a day here or there. Okay. Um, the you person the who works guys? At, well, and the plow guys have, well, that rate was just increased substantially last year. Okay. Um, but the person who works all year round consistently in that line um, in the past has been subject to a rate increase. So that rate does not reflect the plow rate or the regular daily highway rate. So within this proposal that, that George has, has submitted to us, is there a flexibility to grant the, the one consistent person a 2% ATV? And, and still maintain the twenty thousand. Don't increase right. it by the two, two right. percent. Right. But we, you know, we think, or I think, that we should at least do the one who's consistently working a week, every week, or within. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let me check the rate. So yeah, I would to like to see him or her, whatever, whoever. I think um, I, I think we can we can still give the two percent within what and George say is within his. Yeah, I agree. If, if, um, See what yeah. pulls back, I'm, not, I'm not proposing to increase it, but right. I'm proposing that, in all fairness, right. I don't want one person down there not getting a raise when everyone else is. That's not fair. Yeah. Um, Between the three of them now, there's a lot of expertise in welding, that yeah. metal yeah. fabrication. Yeah. Certified. And, and, and they have, um, especially this one part time person, has saved us over the years um, some substantial repair bills, mm -hmm. you know, outsourcing. So. Yeah. In save time, you know, being able to fix things sort of on the fly to sort of preserve it, but being able to fix things quickly so we can maintain um, the plowing fleet. Mm -hmm. and there are lots of repairs that are, 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 we can't, we have to outsource, obviously, mm -hmm. but the, the three of them working together have done a really good job over the last year trying to maintain that fleet um, and not having to outsource a lot of the repairs. So if we can make that work for them within the security. Well, we, we've easy. left the latitude to the road agent to, to long as well, it has been two in the past, but as long as that person um, lives within that line, if, if they want to, if they want, you want to pay that person fifteen dollars versus fourteen for others, as long as you stay within that line, we've granted the, right. the passports have granted the road agent that flexibility. So. Yeah, I would say it would be a directive that that person does get it, and the rest is increased hours. Yeah. Um, so, you say? more hours plus 2% for regular PT part time. Okay. Is this thing getting fuzzy? Yeah. <laughs> I, think it, I was hoping you'd say that because it, it has been feeling that way to me, but again, I, mm -hmm. I keep getting. Every year, my ideas get towards every week. I think my ideas get so. Okay, so we don't need to make any adjustments there. No. We're good there. Yeah. Thank goodness. We don't need to. <laughs> okay. So, and so we are striking this. Striking that. I'm making notes on that. Two percent is may not be. In retirement, is only for the full time. Is correct. Correct. So that will make adjustments, obviously. It is adjusted. We already adjusted there, so that went down slightly. Is there anywhere else we think we can make adjustments or should be making adjustments within the highway department line? Well, you know, I want to, I want to inform you. Yep. Maybe this is going to be a covered time, but um, I met with George and Ed, and there are some things that they want next year, and there's no money in CIP. And um, they pleaded their case, and it was... It's valid, however, I I don't know where the funds will come. We're sort of at the eleventh hour. I mean, it's, it's not an, in my mind. It's not an emergency. Well, they think the truck is. Yeah, I know that. Okay. That so the only thing that I the Kwanzaa huts that for recycling. Is that what you're talking about too? Well, there's the Kwanzaa huts, and there's the truck, and there's the um, articulator, however you say it, right. loader. Right. We're talking about some big dollars, and the only mm -hmm. thing that my my recommendation recommendation would be because they do plead their case and they do have a good, you know, they do have a good theory of why they need them immediately. Yeah. It's to put them on work on a person with town to sign. Right. I mean, I don't know. I, there's no money in CFP for it. Well, so 
so um, CIP, there is money um, allocated already for the truck because it's right. not its first year on right. the tr on, right. on there. So um, let's not get too far ahead, though. Okay. We are going to talk about CIP for sure. All right. But there are no there are no projects that are right to the extent that dollar wise would fall within the within the budget. It would all have to be CIP. Is there anything under ten grand they were talking about? Well, the, the, the roof over the recycling bin, they're saying it's 50000 They're right. saying that, um, no, they're talking about leasing the truck, which is um, 165000 which would be 27000 a year. Right. They're talking about leasing the um, uh, the concept. No, no, it was the other thing. This is uh, the, uh, the loader, uh, the right. loader right. for two-year payments at 43000 each because it's 79000 so they're talking about a seven-year lease on the top kick, and they're talking about a two-year lease on the loader, and and they're also looking at two Kwanzaa huts. One, I guess, with all the um, classes that Ed went to, they're talking about you have to put tires under cover because of grease. Well, we all know yeah, that. Yeah. So they're talking about a Kwanzaa hut for tires, um, and they're talking about a Kwanzaa hut or um, when we do separate uh, recycling. And, make it, and, and their idea is wonderful, and everything they say is great, except that it's a lot of them. Right. <laughs> you know, so, but they're talking about making the bins within the, the hut, and, and they'll, they're going to build it. So it's not, um, so you're not going to labor there, so but still it's, it's... part of the problem. And it's separate from, 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 from these lines. We Five ninety-five two seventy-six. 
And that would be helpful. If I don't want to write 595 276. 276. Alright. Are there, so are we, are we good to accept, are we in a position where we think we can accept the highway? Or do we make more changes? I don't think that. Yes. We're good? Okay. We're closing the books on the highway. Street lighting. So the new bottom line is 596 276. Uh, under 595. 595 oh. 276. 596. Yeah. yeah. Well, it went down. Yeah. I knew it went down, but I didn't. It just said 595. It said 595. Yeah. Good. All right. So street lighting is at um, uh, 35. There's an increase based on on actual usage. Right, Caroline? Um, and projected increases? It is. It's a, um, well, it equals, so that, that was something I just plugged in, and it equals the rebudgeted amount in the column, two, two columns before it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at last year's expenses, you know, I think you could do maybe 33. I don't think you need to go okay. to 35. So do we want to decrease to 33 then? The folks do with that? Covers, it's going to cover the actual cost. I don't want to under budget because that doesn't, that doesn't work either. Okay. So we'll change that to 33 and, and close the section on street lighting. Mm -hmm. All right. Sanitation. So now to the transfer station. All right. So four people, 15 hours, one at $12 for a senior member of the staff. Is that what that means? That, that's how they calculated that request. What is the other salary? It starts at 11. Starts at 11. So until people get raises above that, that's the starting. Mm -hmm. So um, so currently we have three people, one of whom works only on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, you have the supervisor, but there is no other, you know, so it's calculated at that, but there's nobody currently making that. Right. That's because of new staff, right? Um, new staff new comes and going of so staff. Yeah. So did that include the two percent as well? Or don't we? That's a good question. Um, So you can, at the current hired rate, forget the $12 an hour, but at the current rate mm -hmm. for the number of hours that it's open in a week, mm -hmm. um, you can, um, the 2% increase would be 37340 So you have a good budget number in there for 2% on your existing people and hiring what, um, one and a half more people to equal four whole people. Okay. All to have that increase. When Ed works, because there isn't enough people, sometimes Ed has to be at the transfer station, which will require him to be overtime. Um, Only if it's a Saturday. Well, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. That's the busiest day, clearly, yeah. right? So does that come out of that line? Can it that, should. Can it, it? Well, it can, absolutely. Okay. Um, it's a board question where you want to see your, your stuff. I think it makes sense to yeah. split it and put it there. Especially now that he's the manager or whatever. Right, the so it's wherever you want to see it. But yes, that can. Well, I think it gives us better information, information if, he, yes. if it is going forward anyway. Working. So you, you have two and a half people now. Okay. 
if um, at the starting rate, if you hired another person and a half and gave all of those people 18% increase, okay. you could do it within that budget line. That, that's sort of because that is their goal, is to have four people working for three days a week. And what have we done in the past? Three? Um, yeah. yeah, they've been, they did have four, and then they've had some people leave, and they haven't been able to get back, right? Well, right, but now you also have Ed taking on the supervisory responsibilities, making sure things get, um, you know, the big picture things get done. And that's okay, Monday to Friday? But I don't really want to see him coming in on Saturday if we have to pay him time and a half. Right. You know so I mean? the only reason he would come in on a Saturday if, is if you don't otherwise have, you know, some kind of minimum, right. like three people. Right. Because that's where, it, that's your busiest day, so you want to at least have three there mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we have flexibility about having someone come in because someone called out, if, you know, if you have that extra person, that fourth, that would be good. So Ed didn't have to come in, right? Because none of them are ever going to make overtime in that line other than Ed. Right. Yeah. So what would the line look like if it was the budget of three full time people? Three full time people? Three. Or, or three, three. 16 hour people. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, sorry. Three people at 16 hour. I didn't mean full time. Okay. So, like, Okay, um, each individual costs about 9200 Okay. And the work, the, the days are open every... A three-day week, week person week. at the starting rate only, not counting an increase, but one person at the starting rate costs about um, $9,152 a year. So you could subtract that from that line if you wanted to keep it at a steady three. Just keep in mind that you have one person that works one day a week. That's the Saturday person. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So if we made Saturday a four person and the rest of the week three person. Do right. you want to hire one more person at just Saturdays? Is that what you're suggesting? No, we haven't already. Oh, oh, all right. So, so I'm saying because okay. Saturday is a busy day, they don't, and sometimes it's a lot for the existing staff. So if we had work, the ones who work Monday through Friday, do they also work Saturday? Yes. The other two. All of them do. And so two people work three days a week, and one person works just the one. Okay. So if we stuck with having them and keeping them all, and then having still that Saturday. Um. So hold on a second. Um. So Saturday only position at current rate costs three thousand four hundred thirty-two. So really, we could reduce this line down to about thirty-one five. Yeah. Realistic. If you if you're going with three people and four on Saturday, mm -hmm. right? That's what you're looking at, Mike. You're still looking to, to keep the four. I think that's best case scenario. Yeah. Um, you could put a thousand, put a million dollars in that line, and I don't think you know some people are paying on that line. Okay, <laughs> let me retract that statement. You could put a lot more money in this line, and we have had real issues retaining or attracting staff at the transfer station. We had some, we had a wonderful longtime transfer station attendant who was sort of the, the manager uh, who passed away. He was a, 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 a model employee, an incredible, incredible presence. Other people that have been great. We've had people that have been challenging, to say the least. Um, but the the one consistent thing is people come and go. Mm -hmm. There's no. So I, I I think really honestly, best case scenario is three during the week and and a part time or on on, 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 on on Friday on Saturday. And I don't think you're gonna realize that. Either. So I think we're safe going the reducing down. 
Just do the plan you just did. Well, three so during the week and a fourth on Saturday. So I'm hoping we get that. That at a two percent increase, mm -hmm. according to my calculation, is thirty seven three forty. So they may not have those. Are, it's ninety-two hundred. I would that negates their note. I don't. I don't know. Right. Um, their note doesn't make any sense then. Right. This is the case. Right. So. Um, so the ninety-two, roughly ninety-two hundred, is what I use per person. You said. Well, I use the exact ninety-one fifty-two, but. Um, so if you use the exact amount, then it's thirty-seven three forty. Um, that includes the two percent increase. Does okay. That, does that the ninety-one includes the? No, I took ninety-one fifty-two and yeah. I multiplied it by three. Yeah. And then I added thirty-four thirty-two, which is the cost of a Saturday only. Yeah. And then I put the one point oh two on that. And that's thirty seven. Ninety one fifty two times three is twenty seven four fifty six. Add thirty four thirty two. Yes. That's thirty thousand two eighty eight. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Let's do that again. Thank you. And it's it's about thirty one five. Thirty one five five. Which is what I have to here. Thirty one five. So thirty one thousand five oh six would give everyone the two percent. And that three during the week and the fourth one on Saturday. This Saturday, yeah. Adopting the sanitation budget with, my, uh, with those changes, or do you make any other adjustments? Uniforms, we're good there, Caroline. This is the hubbub around uh, yeah. uniforms. A eight cent a week increase. That is that is not included in that. If you want to do the eight cent increase, that's about five hundred dollars a year. So that's an insurance policy so that if they flag something to be replaced because it's stained or ripped or what have you. And that you, covers highway and sanitation? Or is that just in sanitation? That's everybody. That's okay. But um, if you're not going to have four, if you have a person. So, so that's calculated on current levels. So if you, have, if you hire an additional transfer station person, that's going to go up. Your, um, okay. Really then, in the uniforms. Have you looked at anything, any other company? I have not. Um, all I can tell you is that the water district is in similar circumstances evaluating uniforms, and they have found one other company, but have had similar experiences in the pricing out and sales experience of the other company. I can't speak to their okay. delivering quality and the rest of it, but. This company's high, so we use them for the water work, and I think they're high, and they get you if there's anything that's wrong, you know, I mean, it, I don't I mean, know. It, isn't that kind of the point of renting a uniform, that it's going to right. wear out? Right. Yeah, and, we're not and hopefully they don't lose them. Let me just say that. Yeah. Because, so that's uh, why the that insurance is, is to our benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they really charge, they charge for a new set versus you know, but they didn't, the insurance and the whole cost. It was not transparent at the time that right. we first evaluated yeah. this. Yeah. So right. does that insurance cover lost in uniform? Question for George. I don't okay. know. My right. understanding is it, it, it takes care of destroyed items. I would hope it takes care of lost. I don't know. Because they charge you for a brand new set. If it's lost. Yes, they do. So they have an entire set? Yeah. Or they lose their shirt? If, well, if, 
No, a new shirt. Okay. You know, but it's expensive. Uh, it's expensive. Yeah, no, no, um, sure it is. So just keep in mind that although it looks currently flat from last year, it's a split line now that's also in highway. Right. Uh, no. um, it, it's separated. In it's way. separated, and that's why the amount is the same. Okay. Because it's also in highway. So if we're going to increase it, we have to increase it in right. highway. Right. So it's 500, you said, so there's 250 right. in each? That works. Replacement cost of a shirt or a pair of pants is less than what we believe the insurance is going to be. No, we don't. I think we've only had one incident, right? We've only had one incident, and it was, um, I can tell you the bill was $250, but I don't know how many items that was for. It, yeah. Okay, well, there's half of uh, your insurance plan for a year in one department. And, and it's obviously at their discretion. They still say this is going to come back. That is my understanding. That, that you have to flag, you have to clip something, you have to flag an item to get replaced. But if, but if you're going to not want them to replace things, you have to tell them that or give them a line in the sand, you know. But can we, um, under uniform, increase? about um, before we give a bottom line on sanitation okay. um, tipping fees tipping fees yeah please. <laughs> um, tipping fees is flat just as a placeholder we have not met yet right? so so I don't so the, so the contract amount is is one thing I don't I don't know that the that's a great question about the tonnage rate I, mean, I got an email with a contact the other day but it already hasn't been around well, my guess is that it's in the um, it's in our contract with waste management. It's in Landry's contract with waste management. So that's probably already information that's available. Okay. So um, it's either level or going up. We know it's not going to go down. Right. But what we do know is that we anecdotally uh -huh. we believe that more people recycled when we did single stream. Okay. So to, go, to reverse single stream and make people split things out, even though recycling is mandatory, right. there's a good chance that people are going to throw more items away. Okay. Um, we're also not going to be able to recycle the same, all the same things. Right. So some things will automatically get thrown away. Mm -hmm. But so, fail. So it will be thrown away, but it will be cheaper because it's going to fail them, right? Well, so, so 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 hold the phone. So so let's stay on stay on trash for a minute. Um, you know, yes, there's offsetting revenue mm -hmm. with recycling, but for trash, you are going to throw more things away because people will either be non-compliant or because they're throwing away things that we're telling them are no longer recyclable. Right. So your tonnage is going to increase, mm -hmm. which hopefully will not affect the number of hauls, but may. Mm -hmm. So separate separate from that. Currently, we are paying to get rid of single stream. We will pay, continue 
in most cases to pay to dispose of recycling, but at a highly reduced rate from our tipping fee. So how that, this is where John Ordway's offer to help us do the numbers is great because right. that's gonna just, it's gonna take a lot of time to, to break down the components of single stream and the current revenue amounts for what volume versus weight mm -hmm. um, and getting the apples to oranges and get all the fruit salad on the same page to figure out what that's gonna equal. So there's not a way at this point to know what that is because we haven't done the math and there's a lot of components to that. Um, so recycling is separate. You know, I think we're gonna have to, um, or let me say, I would suggest that we reactivate the lines that once lived in the transfer station section for, um, right now we just have trucking recycling, um, which, because it was just a flat fee to get rid of recycling, which was at the time just a haul rate um, because of the commodities. So we have disposal of metal tires, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the only like bulky items, line, disposal, um, and then revenues, another whole situation. But I would, I would just offhand suggest that you're gonna spend more in tipping than we currently are. So that line needs to change into just MS, we can change it to MSW, it's a, um, I need to change the line, I have to hide lines to, but I would suggest MSW demo hauling, I think the vendor out of it, because it's not my employee, but. Okay. We were bigger saying that they're better to haul. Right. right. So, not in that way. Truck and co-op and everything. Right. So there's a, there's the, the tipping fee for the actual, um, we pay per ton okay. at waste management through Lamprey, um, and then we pay a different vendor every time for hauling anything. Um, so it was something that was calculated um, in one of these calculators. Here they are. So those are our. Um, so the rate did go up in eighteen over seventeen. The tonnage went up despite having single stream. I don't recall, single stream I think we've had for three years. So, but tonnage of, of waste did increase. You have more homes, you know. Have to bring in more homes up here, so. So, um, so this is how it's calculated. We can change. Um, so she took, she, she, all right, so she estimated, she estimated what eight, you know, going up 1% on, so, so that wasn't actual, that this, these are her old notes for how she calculated. She increased the tonnage 1% over the previous year and she multiplied it by the, haul, the tipping fee. So 66 times 657. So, um, anyway, that's what I was. So you're saying that we need to possibly increase that more, the tonnage? Or do we know what our tonnage is for? Those are estimates there, right? Um, so do we know what our 2017 tonnage is? 2017 is an actual. Yeah. So she took the actual and increased it by an arbitrary percentage. Right. So what I, one thing we could do, which is gonna take some resources, is go through existing, I can ask Ed to go through, or someone to go, Salome, to get, go through existing Right. invoices and see what we've done for tonnage so far this year yeah, and try to project. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you can always have an increase. But I would, you, yeah. you know, nonetheless, from whatever we've done this far this, far this year, mm -hmm. you can expect that people will throw more away yeah. next year. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so then why don't we hold off on finalizing the sanitation line until we get that information back from, uh, from the... <coughs> Okay. Me some, on Monday night, and I can bring it down when I go down the floor.
would be happy to work on that. Thank you. Okay. So um, those are the intent of those lines is reimbursement. In other words, they are not expended unless there is offsetting mm -hmm. revenue. I think FEMA reimbursement is if I get Homeland Security. Homeland Security yeah. is more like what Bob gets through. FEMA reimbursement is if you have a major. Oh no, no, no I'm, see, I'm, I'm just confused. Where it's all under the same department. So yeah, yeah. The bottom line we, is the twenty. We should have done the twenty four. 22, 100. Yeah. I only highlighted the first one. I think that's all we did. No, I, just, I was looking for one page. Yeah, we need to one. really okay the 22, 100. Yeah. So the bottom line under, um, under emergency management is 22, 100. Mm -hmm. Are we good with that? Yes. Yep. Okay. So now we go to health. The ambulance, what was the. Um, it is accurate. There, there's 36,000. So, uh, do we have to blindly accept their, is there a negotiation here, or do we accept You can they're... certainly try. There's yeah. not been so much of an, a negotiation in the past, so much as an evaluation of other options. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, there was one other service provider who did not want to charge the town any money, but would create a monopoly, which would cause the our current provider to go out of business. Um, and it was the recommendation of both chiefs that the board not do that also because this current provider um, has better response times than the alternative okay. provider. The response um, time was one of the biggest yes. factors. Um, the, um, the company that was going to do it um, for no charge um, was really going to be the only way to come up with the response time mm -hmm. come all the way over to Rome. It's just the 12 and a half percent is it? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not arguing that. And so the increase. company that um, the company that was going to do it for free too is um, 400, aren't they? Mm -hmm. so or, or, or getting restructuring of some something. kind. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so the question is though, th I mean, that's what they get from us, but they still charge re relative residents and insurance companies and then they all, you are required to pay the difference. So what is it exactly we're paying for, just to have that service? Mm -hmm. Yes, so, but not for, for, for emergencies, for actual legitimate emergencies, they don't charge the residents. Yeah, they, we were told they, they, they do charge the insurance company. They charge both. They charge both. For actual emergencies, not for a transfer. What, well, what's in, yeah. Yeah. So by the way, um, if, if a resident wanted to pay Last year they were telling me it was seventy-five dollars to be a member. Yeah. Um, then they would not charge you the difference between right. the insurance reimbursement right. and the cost. But yeah. it's a fee whether you use it or not. It's, it's right. Like it's a membership to be what fee. Yeah. used to do as well. Um, but I, I just don't understand. I guess it's just so they they place a ambulance in a certain place and it's supposed to keep the residents and. But you're paying, you're paying the staff, but you're paying, as a person who uses the service, you're paying the staff as well. They're not cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Well, we can certainly look for other alternatives. Well, they're all going to do it. That's the problem. But after, you know, it's not going to work for this year. Yeah. So, so you, there is a contract 
that you don't have yet because they're working on language. And the fire chief also wants to change some language. Okay. So when I get that, I can ask for how did you calculate 36. But keep in mind also, um, unless you would like for it to be otherwise, it's currently a two-year contract. So it would be 36 over two years. Mm -hmm. So oh. 36 on, per on year okay. for two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's you know. how it's been, though, Mark. Okay. I mean, that's not uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not 36,000 a year. It's 36,000 per year. No, it's 36 per year. Yeah. But really, 72 for two years. Right. So we will not. Correct. So you're locking in that rate over two yeah. years. Mm -hmm. A little, little better, but still a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were going to get some statistics on the number of calls made. Right. And I did ask for that. Okay. I also asked for um, the fire chief of like quarterly reports or some kind of mm -hmm. regular reports. So they're working on that. So, so having said all that. I
Mitsubishi. Yeah. So let's start at the top with the, with the general government administration. So we have, for 2019, we have um, putting the money aside for the, or, or spending money on the town boiler and putting money aside into the fund for um, Denotes how much money has been allocated for that purpose. Yes. So, as it stands, if you were to purchase a town hall boiler, there's twenty thousand dollars set aside for that. Yeah. So the taxation would be five thousand on that, unless you wanted to reallocate. Yeah. But the twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand is coming in nineteen, so there isn't really money there for it because that's nineteen's contribution. Well, so according to how this is calculated, um, column S tells you, um, rather, X is the total for the project. So, um, right, but 19 is next year, which means the deposit hasn't been made into the account yet. I understand what you're saying. So the money really isn't there. You gotta get it approved in the budget well, in order I, to have it be here. I, I understand what you're saying, and that is true according to how this is set up, but I guess what I'm trying to say is the 2019 amount should only be 5000 right. because you've got 20 in there already. So it's currently held in the CIP. So the, currently in CIP, it looks like we have $331,600. Um, so, no. Um, that's what it says. Okay. But where, where did the 20 go in? That's why I'm confused. Previous time. years. Yeah. Like, it did? Well, so maybe not. Maybe yeah. oh. last year the board reallocated how much is in it. Oh, I don't okay. know. But, in, you know, in theory. I guess if I could see the, before 19 so, figures, that would make me feel so more. The, the, the amount of dollars in the CIP. What's so, in the CIP okay. card? So the, the CIP is at 334, 234. So why is it there? Because you need to allocate, the board needs to decide, you've got a difference there that needs to get allocated. So um, you have $85,000. Okay, well, before you go any further, how much is really in the CIP fund? 334. 334. Hold on. Um, 234. 234. CIP. Right. Which is why there's this separate sheet to tell you how the balance is calculated so that you know what that is. So then the goal is to go back and manipulate column T so that the balance, which is currently 379, is the same as on the other sheet, 334. So the difference is $85,000 that needs to be unallocated from column T. I just, I just want to show you how this works so that you can get the information you think you're trying to get out of this. So far on the CIP, we are, are suggesting for this year to purchase and move voters. Boiler, mm -hmm. we have moved on. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Radios and the cruiser. Yeah. For a total of 85,000. No. Um, 
So, let's do this in, I'm going to do this in, 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 in stages, so the model will keep ranging for you, mm -hmm. that's okay right now. What I'd like to do is go through each section, so general government, police, fire, highway, transfer, um, and look at what the priorities are, decide on whether or not we want to actually go forward with those priorities We always put money aside in the CIP every year. Well, we have since we recreated the CIP. Um, you can see it here. Um, right. yeah. so 178, 200 is what was put aside last year. Right. Column C are the expenditures that were approved at town meeting. Mm -hmm. I need to fill in actuals that were actually spent for each of those warrant articles. Mm -hmm. So you take the previous year balance and you add what the warrant article was approved to add it for, and then subtract whatever the actuals were to get to. So if we followed the um, the, um, the formula that was set forward by um, that's just for the spending on the CFP, or is that what's the bottom line? Um, so are you talking? You're talking about the bottom. Yeah. So like this year it says what, one fifty six six point two. Where are you? Where do you? I have a bigger copy. So where are, where are you? I'm here. Um, yeah, here. Okay. So that's a different number than what I. Have. So so what column are you looking? Like total for which column? Uh, Oh, I? Um, I think you're on I. I is 236, 622. 236, 622 is what I have. That's 2019. I don't so that, that's with everything that's currently in it. So that's, right. that's setting money aside and, and spending, right? So total represents 236, whatever it will change, right? So we need to set, so what you just said, and I'm going to make sure I'm following along. So we're subtracting. From the 236 and change, 236, 622, we're subtracting the dollar amount from whatever, 115,000, right, that we want to purchase. The remainder is what, 85, uh, 85, 90? 80, the difference? Uh, yep, well, 8,500. 8,500, or even, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, but clearly that's not. Um, 85,000. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, Sorry. like, hold, 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 no, hold, hold on. So, so you're you're looking at um, what's currently allocated to be purchased, the value right. of what's to be purchased, right. minus what you know you are supporting right now. Th th this is something no, else. Like, don't, don't, no. don't look at that. Okay. Don't look at that. So, this, keep in mind, the com current column I total reflects what's currently. Um, in that line, but remember, like town hall boiler should really be five thousand dollars if you're going to do that this year. Like it depends on what's already in there, how much you're going to. Even if you're buying it this year, how much is already set aside mm -hmm. for it, or if you're not going to buy it, like those numbers for nineteen are not necessarily accurate. Mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm saying. So, I, in, in other words, I would suggest that you go with the 119 and know that you're supporting 119, and then go over to column T and look at how much has been put away for those items so far. Mm -hmm. Decide if you want to pull from other items right. or right. use more or less, and, and then, because the spreadsheet's really out of date with, you know, once you decide to purchase, Right. Or, or, or once you put a year on everything, then you need to reallocate how much money right. every year you're putting away for those things. Right. right. So where on this spreadsheet, um, maybe it's projections, uh, is, um, is what, we, what, what was projected before we tinkering 
Before we make any, any changes, what was the projection that we needed to save in 2019 to support the, um, the spreadsheet as it is? As it was recalculated. So last year we put 178,000 and change. Right, and that's, that's what this calculation was that I we just... We used to have a spreadsheet that showed us yeah, it's, it's X amount of years, 10 years. Right. right there, so, are. so I don't. That that's what I deleted. Your eighty-five thousand dollars. One. The short answer is we ought to look at the twenty eighteen spreadsheet to know that, because um, this is too manipulated at this point, and I don't have that. Though Suzanne will get it to me. Are they high? Are they hidden? Or um, are they I believe it was one fifteen. But in this spreadsheet, because that's the number that I had, but at the same time, that doesn't reflect the 178 that I know that we actually approved to transfer into CIP. So I'm not sure what that discrepancy, which was the $85,000, where that came from. So, so what we have here is a good structure of a document that works with calculations, but all the inputs need to be adjusted. So what you so these two are hidden lines. You've got twenty five for thirty five plus the twenty five for the the boiler. Okay. So twenty five plus <coughs> equals sixty. There. That thirty five is really sixty. That's what he's saying. Wasn't the true line. Yeah. It says it now. So then we have for the police department. Well, I would like. Proposed lease is 25 versus a 30, which is what we had previously. So 25 there, and the message board, 50% um, of that's supposed to come from a grant. So but we still have to budget the full amount, right? So that's 23,800 is the full amount. Correct. Okay. I, just I want believe to make sure so. I don't have any other notes besides what's here. Okay. So that's the uh, the mobile sign that. Currently, borrows Stratford County, I think, and maybe if the Stratford County one is used or down for repairs or something. So, but we have the opportunity to finally purchase our own, and half of it will be paid for by a, uh, a federal grant. So, are folks comfortable keeping that on? What do we want to say? Thanks or no thanks? I think if we can leave it for now, I mean, if you rule it out, when we get to the bottom. Um, I mean, I think if, if we're getting half of it for free, it kind of makes sense, but. Okay. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's that 40, what's the actual number there? 48,800. Okay. 48,800. 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, right, okay. There we go. All right, so I'm going to make sure it's, it's different on my spreadsheet, so it goes down. Fire department. We've already said yes to the mobile radios, right? That was our priority, mm -hmm. and we're still good with that. So that's sixty-five. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What else do we have here? That's the only. Th 
thing that I have for this year. Because mm -hmm. he, ha he had his air pack station that he wants to push off a year from now. Right, but there's looks like there's contribution of 15 for the Forest of Jericho and 10 for the air pack station. Right. So there's a total of 90. Good with that for this year? That doesn't make any sense to me. I would have park. Okay. So we have replace the 20, 2007 GMT top kit, and that's at 165.5. What is that? What is the capital? 165 is what he told me yesterday. Okay, 165. Okay. And the target year for that was supposed to be this year. So, and within the CIP, hold on just a second. Uh -huh. In the CIP, at the spreadsheet that we believe under T, right. in column T, we have set aside 154,400 mm -hmm. to offset the $165,000 price tag of the truck. Go ahead. I just want to make so, sure I'm reading this correctly. Yes, that is correct. However, um, the one thing we're not that is not reflected in the spreadsheet is total equals 160. Um, so, so right now we have 35,600 in the 19 line, but you'd have to change that to 40. However, I'm not sure because he's proposing a seven year lease. So that's a difference. Well, no, I think the 165 contained whatever the lease part of it, you know, the, the more you pay towards the lease. But if we have a hundred, you're saying we have 154 four in there already? That was theoretically allocated for that, for that one. Then we year. should just buy it out and not lease it. I'm not interested in doing a lease. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I don't. That's not something I, I was really interested in anyway. So. Okay, I'm just saying if you have 154 four uh, there, you, yeah. why would we lease it if we've already no, got it right. there? Right. So, so my understanding was that the 165 reflected what it should cost to replace it, I and now that true. number has changed to 170. Not yeah. because of the lease. I don't. I, I was not relating that. Can you, can you calculate this 27261 times seven? 198.27. That's what it would have cost if you leased it. Okay. Okay. So. So that must have been originally not leasing it when it was first proposed. It's the 165. Because it was when <coughs> we had to revise it. Yeah. So if you, he's telling me 165, but then if you lease it, it's going to be 198. So I'm not, I'm not for leasing either. I'm not really happy about spending 155. I'm certainly not happy about spending 190. Priority this year, the articulated articulator loader, or is it replacing the top kit? Because I don't see both happening this year. If we do, if we do any of them, I don't. I'm not suggesting we have to do any of them. I'm just saying if we're going to, uh, there's no way that I'm going to be able to support them. Yeah. Them. Is there a salvage value for the 2007? There must be some. He value, says that, that it has some value to smaller communities. Okay. So he thinks he can get a good trade. Oh, okay. So, so the 165 could be less based on the trade. So if the vehicle, let me just think this through. If the vehicle still has some value to a smaller community <laughs> than us, <laughs> why then? And I'm not an expert, I'm just saying it out loud. Why then does it not have any value to this small community? What 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 are they going to be able to do with this truck that we can't do with it? It's more the communities. I guess I asked. The same are, are they not going to use it for plowing? I mean, that could be legit. That could be legit, and you also is, it could be communities that don't, are just like a, like yeah. a, like a, um, a mobile home park, completely flat, not trying to go up hills. Okay. Yeah. 
We are we have a truck that was not built for the functions in which we're doing it. Yes. So I ask, can you replace the tires? No. Can you do <laughs> reduce your load? No. You know, so the, the questions that I thought of, no, it, it is what it is this way. Yep. However, there is need, there is a use for it that is less than our need here. And mostly it's hills. He says mechanic, he goes to and he slides right back down. So, you okay. know, so, Highland is another bad spot. You know, because that it, that's got a good incline. You know, he was naming all of the spots yeah. that went in which um, going up um, Foundry um, onto, I think, Pine, he said, is a bad spot. So the, it's some areas within town that, that it just isn't properly, uh, well, there parts of that the, 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 the truck yeah. wasn't properly spec for. I get that. And I... But there are other communities that are just totally flat, and they would be able to use that for a while. You know, because I say, if it's rust, we can get that fixed. If it's, you know, I was asking all of those questions, and it was not, um, it's not as much those things, and because that is common, because you're dealing with salt all the time, um, that you're going to get some rust. Right. Um, but it is more of our need, and the truck was not built correctly for our need. So, are there... That's how the truck is being used currently. So for the route, the, the routes that's being used currently. Mm -hmm. Are there, and I don't know. I mean, are there other routes in town that they could be used for that is the city? I mean, I, I don't know. I, maybe not. I don't know. Based on the size of the truck versus the, the size of the road that it used to be used on. I don't know. So here's the other reality. If we order it now, or, we, or rather in March, right? Mm -hmm. If they have some in stock, then great, we can go down and we can take one out. If not, they have to build it for us, and that takes, what, another year or so, George was estimating? Mm -hmm. So you really don't have it until, for the, until the following season. Which is fall of next year. Right. Right? Imagine. If you order it in the spring, you can get it in the fall. I would imagine. You wouldn't yeah, be able yeah. to use it during the year, the right. summer year. But right. I think you can have it for winter. Yeah. All right. So we have. Um, there is what? There's, there's like 16,000 miles on that. Yep. R rather low miles. Yep. But it's, it's more the more of the wear and tear on it than the plant. I get that. Mm -hmm. So that represents mostly, a good deal of it represents 16,000 miles of, of, of heavy use. Mm -hmm. It's not just driving around with the plow gear on it. I get that. 2007, 11 years old. I'm still seeing rather. Um, I assume that we would be replacing it. So it's, oh, it's not George's fault that it wasn't correct, correctly designed. But it was so, supposed to replace last year. He moved it out a year right. to get his utility truck. Right. That was. Yeah. That was his decision. Yeah. Yes. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yes. And it was the board's decision, previous boards, to keep it on that schedule. Mm -hmm. And we would revisit when the time came mm -hmm. to see if it did it really need to be replaced or can it be still in good working condition and can be pushed out. So, I mean, it's more of a. Uh, so, if we target, they're not actual. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, we, we have to keep this truck through this winter. Yeah. Um, we assume that there's value left in it. Mm -hmm. If it uh, doesn't make it through the winter and it's completely, then there's, there's zero value. Uh, I don't know. Right. I, I don't know if it's a catastrophic failure or a, you know, we need it. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but if we don't do it now, then it's two years. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that we should should have been able to get more than <coughs> ten years out of the truck. How many plows do we have? You have three plus the new one. The new one, which is not the utility out there. one. No, how many like big road trucks? 
clouds do we have? The big dump trucks are on two. That's one of them? Yes. So if that goes, then we would have to bring somebody in to help us, right? Not necessarily, because the way that the utility truck was pitched to, to us, mm -hmm. me in particular, was that this could be a backup truck in case something like that happened. And it could be used to take care of the village. It could be used at the transfer station here at the town. Well, maybe the town hall, maybe not. But we use the front loader because of the... And they can't push it out of the Right, because of the, 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 the rails that have been damaged in the past and all that. Um, so that was one of the reasons why we bought not a small little runaround truck to chase parts with, but a, a much more or a considerably larger, heavier duty uh, truck. So it could take the plow in, 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 in case of an emergency like that. Um, there will be an expense to put a plow yeah. on it because it doesn't yeah. have the hardware for hookups. Mm -hmm. for the new one. The right. one does not, yeah. yeah. But I mean, still, you got to be limited to what you're going to be able to do with that. Yeah. I mean, you can't do it on big road roads, I wouldn't imagine, and in a lot of hilly roads, too, because then you're going to wear that one down, because mm -hmm. it's not the intent of that machine. And the, um, the, the other, the, the slightly larger, um, the 550, um, also needed to be the needed to be offset for, for one piece. That one is currently used on the road. That has a route. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's not an additional vehicle. No, but it could be. What's the 550? Oh, is that the other? Uh, that, that's the regular one ton that the road agent would always run around with All before the time. you got the oh, new vehicle. Oh, okay. So there's actually, there's three then. The three that are being used. The one we're talking about, the bigger one. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's yes. actually three so, plows. Yes. Well, you three. said big dump truck. I was thinking. Um, yep, the, yep. Okay, but the other one is actually. Used yep. to, that's yes. right, okay. And so this smaller, I don't remember what is it, the 350, well, I don't remember what the number is, um, could be used to offset an emergency. Mm -hmm. and that's why we went with the, the larger size. Keep in mind that all the conversation we just had. Now let's talk about the articulator loader, which is um, would be used in my mind. What I was describing primarily, you know, exclusively uh, to plow sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It's narrower than the front loader we have now, yeah. so it can fit on the majority. I wouldn't say all because the, the, not every sidewalk in the village is. Size. Some are narrower than others. In some places, they're narrower. In some places, there are telephone poles in the middle of them. So um, George can't control that. This is um, new to the new to the schedule, right? This was not a yeah. this was not a, an item that was um, planned. What are the other uses? So the, the, the front loader, the, rather the, the bobcat that we have now, that loader, uh, would be used still at the transfer station and for smaller highway projects. This articulated or articulator loader comes with, and what does George tell me? All sorts of attacks. Get those and consider, oh, I'm pulling my past paper apart. You could use all the current attachments. So Which we will have a plow, a sander, a blower, and a bucket. So it can be used for winter and summer. I had winter summer power package. So it can be used with the uh, for smaller uh, projects. So it doesn't have to bring out the. Um, I had a mower. The, you said mower, um, right? Yep. Okay. So it doesn't have to bring out the. Um,
Water hazard for another piece of equipment, well, the, the current bobcat. So that, in my mind, although it's nice to have the extra, the extra ability, we're, we're currently being served by another piece of equipment we just bought this past year. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's not really. It is a benefit, but it's not an immediate benefit because we've already taken. Well, we thought, at least I thought, that we had already taken care of that issue. So that's not. A New thing for me, in my mind. What are the other? I'm sorry, I'm making all those with my recollection that I was talking about. Sanding is a new function. Sanding is a new function. Thank you. Um, so, sanding of the sidewalks. And the
I shoveled the sidewalk in front of my own house um, this past winter mm -hmm. and winter before that, actually, um, because I was tired of having to walk to flush the um, soap rack to, to get to my front door. And the back door wasn't really an option in the way from snow going up. All those flights of stairs. My wife grew up in the city of Manchester, where you are required by the city ordinance to shovel in front of your own house. Oh, yep. When I lived in Boston, that <laughs> was what... <laughs> I mean, this is what... I mean, so... That was my responsibility to the mm -hmm. sidewalk. How, the other side of the argument is there are a lot of elderly people that may not be able to shovel their own sidewalk. That, um, now, I don't know if those folks are actually getting plowed out now. Maybe, maybe some of them are, some of them aren't. So, but I mean, so there are, you know, there are options that um, other municipalities put on their um, on their residents. Snow removal. Um, businesses typically have to shovel in front of their own businesses. In other places, I don't. The only place I can think of is is on Front Street Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may be. I don't know the the country news line thing, wherever it's called now. Um, State line that was over there. Um, that partial wall sidewalk he does that, I think, too. That as he was going down, he got that more momentum at that point. So, <laughs> and so that doesn't really the business district isn't all that huge. So, um, I don't know. So I, I don't know. Does eighty thousand dollars make sense this year? Yeah. Um, Were there other things he said, Denise, that that sold it to you? Well, it was mostly because he, you know, he, he was saying that it is it's a unit that will fit better on the, we have non-uniform yep. sidewalks throughout the town, so some don't, uh, some he digs up, I guess mostly Southdale, he digs up a lot of lawns, which doesn't make our residents happy, but need a little non-removal of snow, right. so, you know, um, but that's kind of what he was saying, is, yeah. and it does have, you know, it has multiple uses um, as well, and it had a sander in the back for when you're when you're snow plowing, you're also sanding at the same time. Um, I mean, they all make sense. Whether or not it's something that we can right. afford is a whole other issue. Yeah. You know, I mean. I'm just not sure why it's it wasn't on here before, and now it's kind of mean. We have to know that George has only been here. George this this year, is his first. Okay. This is his first forty okay. year, and it's really his Perfect. first budget okay. year. Yeah. He inherited a budget. He didn't. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's kind of that's kind of why. I mean. Okay. And I think with every department head, you have a different sort of opinion about sure. what one person thought was a priority versus what sure. you do. So. And if I think back, I'm sure the previous road agent brought to our attention that that the Bobcat doesn't work on certain sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. lying to you, I think, if I tried to make thinking that he did. I'm mm -hmm. sure he did. Mm -hmm. you know, he plowed the, um, the, at least the main street sidewalk down to Southdale. That's a route for the kids to get to school. So yeah. um, I don't know. There aren't. Yeah, he has a problem with that one too. I forget what he said. I can't. I forget. Yeah, he he keeps on like going off it off or something. Problems. Yeah, uh, they're just not all of the same size. Right. right. So here's the other thing to keep in mind. In it's going to be a lot of these. I'm not telling you. We have we have the road maintenance um, um, document that we use, right, to to keep track of what roads we're, we're trying to prioritize. Much like the CIP, you know, keep the constantly, you know, this X amount of money to, to do this road and, and, and prioritizing what, what roads need to be done, right? So the village is on there, and I'm sure it's been pushed out at this point because of the issues we had on Heritage and, and, and Woods Run. But um, part of that was looking at sidewalks mm -hmm. uh, and saying, if we're going to be spending all this money redoing the, the roads in the village, does it make sense to um, extend the sidewalk? Mm -hmm. So I don't, but I don't remember off the top of the 2025. It wasn't right. It's, 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 out there. it's, it's not a few years out of it. It was one of the last, um, if not the last road um, on the road on the um, schedule, but it's pretty darn close. So it may not make any difference um, to this conversation or not. In the future, boards may say, 
not, you know what, we're not going to have to tell you about two guys that are completely great. But if there's can't a plan control that, then we'll, in the next half decade, to fix the underlying problem, we may not need to buy yeah. but, uh, a special piece of machinery. I, I, I think that, um, I think it needs to be, I think it needs to be put on the schedule. It is on the schedule. I just don't know if the, the priority for 20 minutes. Yeah. I, and I, I get it, George is, is uh, our, our um, relatively new road agent, and he's trying to do the best that he can with his good money and making recommendations. That's what we ask him to do mm -hmm. through this process, and we appreciate his input. Um, much like every other uh, select board, I would much prefer to have him come by with a little um, slender, articulated motor and not have my myself out there shoveling snow, but it, it is what it is. I don't have to. There are five other people that own units in my building that could get out there to shovel too. And they don't. So, the inquiry is that you are the, the, the keeper of the CIP for us. The manager of the CIP well, you know, I, I think that if it was in such bad shape, wouldn't it be supposed to be fixed in the last two weeks and then deferred it a year so he could get whatever the other piece of equipment that he needed? Um, I don't know. I think. So you would lean more towards the truck than the, the loader thing? Yes. Only because of what would happen if it died <coughs> without fixing. You know what I mean? It's not um, we need to have supplies up, or it's going to cost us to have someone come in and bail us out. Well, they would try to cut the boots out there. It cost us a lot of money, so yeah. we had this issue when all of our uh, trucks were down for one reason or another accident. Yeah. Plus, mechanical failure. Mm -hmm. So, if I was to fix it too, I would get the trucks up. Okay. So, Mention, I'm just trying to think. He mentioned, um, or Senior Dover said that they would, did he say that they would have difficulty in repairing it if something catastrophic went wrong with it? Or was it, I just trying to remember. <coughs> the they said it was on borrowed time. It is the recollection I have from that presentation. No, it would it hurt for us to take it to an independent person, possibly like Roger's auto body or someone like that, to get a second opinion about how bad the shape is for plowing? I mean, these no, people work on heavy mind. equipment all the time. Yeah. Um, and it well, doesn't so have to be Roger's, just so, I mean, as, a, as a taxpayer, yeah, bit, you know, yeah. um, in our business. Um, but, you know, maybe, it's, maybe it requires a second opinion, yeah. you know? Okay, so let's hold off on the, let's talk to George on Monday, it's only a couple of days away, mm -hmm. so let's talk to him and tell him what we'd like to get a second opinion mm -hmm. on on the condition of the truck, um, and see where we go from that. I'd also like to know the residual value, um, yeah. if it's 40000 this year and then it goes down to 20000 Two years. Because they used it in the middle yeah. of the year. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's important. important. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he'll know this. I don't know how, he, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at least hey. a number to work from. Sure. 4,000. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a big investment that they're asking. He's, um, we're being asked to, to present to the board. So we should certainly do all that, our due diligence. So let's do that. Um, okay. I, for one, though, would, would like to keep the articulator loader on the schedule mm -hmm. and pick another date, another year besides 2019. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't care what year we pick, um, what year is the, so the Bobcat is scheduled for, we're going to say 2021 because that's the year it was on the schedule mm -hmm. to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's, it 
fees to be or not is another conversation, but um, and the loader thing, um, you put out to uh, have any updates on that? On the 20, 20, 21? Yeah, 2020 was pretty late as a threat at this point. Yeah, if you look at everything else, or you go up, it's not. From this department, but I'm thinking another department. Yeah, yeah, there's only two 2020s. That's fire and the fingerprint thing. That's it. We have a, a forestry vehicle at a hundred and, mm -hmm. hundred and what is it? I can't think of our own company. So that's a, Again, that was an add in this year. That's 50, sorry. No, no. It was 15. Either, so maybe we should think, look at transfer station before we. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Because they, yep. you know, they're, they're coming in with some big things. So why don't we, um, as a placeholder, just put in 2020. Or 2020, we're going to 2020. It doesn't mean that we have to do it. We can, um, it can be changed. What is the amount, the total amount? Um, for what? For the, um, for the truck, or uh, loader? Yeah, for the loader. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Expire someday, like so. It's on there for 2033, yeah. and you don't fund it until you get no. to 10 years out. 2028. So, so um, that's why we did that. Is that 2033? But we we are putting we got 19,000 in there. Right, and so that's that's past the 10 year mark because if we're really going to replace it in 2033, then you start putting money away for it in 2023. Um, so I'm not sure why the 19 is where it is. Okay. But I would just say, I would just caution about removing things altogether because then right. we're going to forget that we own them and so forget to fund them when the time comes. Right. Do we need right. both of them on there, though? Or do we, we do have two. It's two, just the one that you keep changing the year. Well, so two. one is new. Right. And one is not. So they would have different years. Okay. But I would still suggest that you keep them both keep on them there. Okay, so that's the reason why it's just because Right, and just maybe not the fund future. them. Yes. Okay. Another tight 
points ahead of other departments. And theoretically, you should add Baylor. Yeah, I have Oh, yes, I did have that as well. Yeah. I guess they're calling the big recycling one is a shed, not a quantity. Then shed is also fifteen thousand. So with them constructing that as well. Okay, with the Just having something that's going to go over the recycling bin. Remember, he said oh, the bin. barrier, um, the, the things on Sligo Road, the uh, barrier, the Jersey, Jersey barriers. Okay. He would also, if they get to fix their project that he's proposing, yep. those Jer Jersey barriers would be used as separations for the bins because he said he had a use for them. So he would put them in that in that shed and to use them as a separation. Because okay. you still have to go in there and Pick it up with his whatever right. use is in there. So it's going to be. I'm just trying to picture this thing. Mm -hmm. So kind of like with this, well, a larger scale, the salt shed. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I pictured. Yeah. Right. So it's going to have an overhang, the sides, and then the Jersey barriers to separate. I don't know whatever it is, labs or whatever they get I put think in it's there. It's going to have a door though. It's going to be able to keep close to the weather that doesn't get in it. Okay. So then you can open it and go in there and get your stuff and. Bring it to the baler or whatever the hell for you to yeah, They can construct this themselves. I'm sorry? They can build this themselves. That's what we're saying. And the new mayor is going to have on something. Where are they going to put this? Oh, I talk about that. We need to be very careful about that because. He did talk to, he did talk to yeah. uh, Tom Clark. He's already talked to Tom Clark about it. Okay. Well, but I'm not sure that Tom Clark knows, but at least what I'm thinking. Like, yeah. like, what are we talking about? Let's see. Um, conservation land, conservation our land federal um, grant that we received once upon a time for, um, to purchase Scoutland, and then we built a transfer station, did a land swap with the feds over conservation land. So the, the transfer station is built on a conservation area, and we do not have defined how much, or at least as far as we can tell, how much land is, are we using for transfer station, and how much will be required to keep separate for conservation. We need to know that so that we can respect that boundary, and we don't know that boundary. I, okay, I guess my assumption was he was replacing it where it is today, is my assumption. I would just be concerned that if we're going to increase the footprint, we may have room to do that. We just don't know. Yeah, we would have to ask that question with him, but my assumption was he's going to take what you, what you have today, and then he's going to enclose it. It's kind of where I was, you know, where you have your single stream now. Um, so because you're going to have to have separate bins because yeah. that's what our requirement is now. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, which when it was the the other way when you separated it, that's what you had. It was right where it is now, right? Yeah. It was just yeah. not covered. Just, just not covered. Not covered. Well, and his point was, and I, and I don't know how much it adds to it, but his point was with the rain yeah. and the snow and all of that increases the the weight. And you're paying for removal of something that's not Aren't there recyclable. Aren't at the bottom of the cans that no. have the water up? There? Not at all? No. Hmm. Exactly. But anyway, that's the, that's the reason. The recycling, they'll be bailing themselves and will be hauling it to somewhere. True. Some of it. Some, Some of it, of right. Like the glass we, so currently we have a bin and it's, there's a lot put in it and they crush it down and well, we're not going to be delivering them anymore. That's what he told me. Well, it's going to be a 
location. It's going to a new location, but we're still going to separate out glass. But the we only paper and cardboard, we only have space right now for paper and cardboard. So anything we're bailing is sitting outside right. getting snowed on until we have enough to haul it. So. Well, I don't know how much it impacts their ability to bail it or yeah. rejection from vendors. Um, okay. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. And, and also maneuverability. You're stacking these bales, but then right. it snows. So can you remove the bales, or do you have to wait for it to thaw? Or does, you know, I, I don't know what the management is when there's right. snow around. Yeah, you'd have to answer. But so the, the current quantum that we have is big enough for paper, right? And that's, only, that's the only thing that they can go in there. Yeah, there's, yeah. there isn't room for anything. We have some, some like small electronics and things on there, right? You know, like um, and I'm not sure now. whether they're going to stay there or well, not. They okay, well, but, but yeah, either way, they think they have enough room for. Okay. Yeah, this was okay. strictly to cover recycling. Okay, so we're not going to solve it today because it's not going to be on the schedule for this year. But it's just uh, it's good to know some of these things. So when do we think though? So the, the Kwanzaa hut and the recycling shed, let's just say that we have all the answers and we're ready to, we're ready to build it. What year, um, what year were they shooting for? Was it for next year? I know they want it for this year, but that's not happening. I would say 2020. I would say they want it in 19, so if it's not going to happen in 19, I'm sure that they would want it in 20. Well, all of these things are, are, are going to be separate yeah. more articles. But we're trying to bid, I mean, we're trying to put away money. That's the idea of the capital improvement. Right. But if something like this comes up and it, and people feel it's that important, they should have a choice whether or not they want to support it by a Warren article. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so, separate without any, any offsetting. Right. I mean, it would be a direct hit to the taxes. Right. Anyone so, now, 25 people can... Like Bring us a more article in a couple months and say, hey, I want you to build a quantum hut. But he's going to have to sell it to the public, not us, because, I mean, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, if it's that important to do, I mean, he's going to have to. Well, in my mind, the, the people that he has to convince are the three of us. And then it's our job. I just put down a quantum class shed at, 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 on my schedule, but if you want to put them down separately. I mean, at a value of 30? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't really have much room to write it because I only have a couple of lines. Have them join it together? Okay. Um, and then this baler? Mm -hmm. What year are they saying they need a new baler? Well, they didn't. 
they just said, as I explained to him, we're talking about 10 years out, so you know, what is in 10 years that you're looking? So, I mean, I would say you can at least go 10 years out because of what you've gotten, and they're thinking that's going to last us a long time because of the quality. So I think the question is, when do you start funding it? You put right. it there as a placeholder, and then exactly. at what year are you starting to fund it? If you want it, you want it, the target replacement year is 10 years, I would say within five years, you just start putting money in. Yeah. So if we go 10 years, so if we go um, 2029, which is 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then we'd start some money in there and then see how it goes and see what it's like when, when we even start it. This is know? the new refurbished one? Yeah. The new refurbished one that we're getting? Yeah. But things could change from now to now with recycling and all of those kind of things, and it may not even be something that we will need. So you have to reduce them in the years 
which will then reduce it in the T column, right? For um, instance, correct. Okay. Because col um rather, mm -hmm. hold on. Um yes, column T is a calculator sure. of the previous of all the, of the rows. Ones. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we let's look at our schedule. Then have we scheduled? Have we scheduled any of the uh, other of these? Do they get posted? This is the last scheduled. That doesn't mean we can't, um, as part of our regular meeting, uh, suspend and go into the budget workshop and then come back up. How's our agenda look? Uh, you, could, you could spend time on that. You could spend some time on that? Caroline, I need to talk about that. Yeah. So, so we can start our, time on Well, our first, um, November 28th. Is it after Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, let's do this then. Um, what do people's schedules look like for Saturday, November 10th? So, we schedule another. So, we would work on, on pieces of the budget on uh, Monday evening, but then schedule. Uh, we're not going to finish the CIP conversation. Outstanding questions, maybe about um, other things that we can set aside in the budget, but um, I don't think we'll just do capital. So we said nine to noon again for our hopefully final session on Saturday, November tenth. Will that work for folks? Mm -hmm. All right. We'll add that to our calendar of meeting date, and um, hopefully that will be our, our last. Thank you.